Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to another Truckers MP tutorial. Today, we are just going to quickly go over how to register, download, install, and log in for your first time. Truckers MP. Pretty simple process. There's a couple confusing steps, though, so we're going to try to cover all of that in this video. First things first, you're going to want to head on over to the Truckers MP website. This is where you'll download the mod from. You will need a Truckers MP account. This account will need to be linked to your Steam account, so you can do that all through your browser. Once you've got yourself all registered and logged in, should be very easy. Just hit the download now button. That'll install or download the launcher that you're going to need Truckers MP. So now I've downloaded it here in a zip file. You will need a program that can read it like WinRAR. So just open it, extract it, run the exe. It should run okay even without being extracted. Make sure you accept the agreement. Choose a path to install the launcher wherever you'd like. If you don't uh, do custom paths for your install, you can just leave it as is. You can select which multiplayers you want to install. ETS2 and ATS are the only options available. Only install for the games that you actually have. Now here's the confusing part. I see a lot of people getting stuck on this. The installer should always just default to your default install directory. So if you don't mess around with install directories, shouldn't be an issue. If for whatever reason you get to this step where you need to select your install directory and you have no idea where it is, you're just sitting here and you're like, I got nothing. There's an easy fix for finding this. Just go over into your Steam there, navigate to the game in question. For us now, it's American Truck Simulator. Right click in your library, properties, Local Files, Browse. This will automatically open up folder for your save game. So if you just click File Explorer right here, you can select all, copy that directory, and just pop it right into your installer. That makes it nice and easy. And then the same thing for your other game. Go on from there, you get your Start Menu Folders, all that, Desktop icon, and it should all go fine. In order to do this, you are going to have to own the game or games on Steam. If you don't, it's not going to let you download, install, and play. It will not let you play Truckers MP if it can't see that your Steam account owns the games. It is possible that your Steam account could own the games and you have the minimum two hour requirement, but it's still not letting you register or install or play MP. This is most likely because your profile on Steam is set to private. So what you want to do is from your own profile page, hit edit profile. Down in your privacy settings here, you want to make sure that your profile is publicly viewable. You're going to want to make sure that your game details are publicly viewable. The rest of this you can leave as you like, but this must be set to public. If not, then Truckers MP can't see if you own the game and therefore will not let you install. Once you change these settings, it could take a while, hours, maybe even up to a day the changes to apply. So if you're still having trouble after applying those changes, give it up to a day to apply and you should be able to install from there. Once you have Truckers MP all installed and good to go, it should be just as easy as looking up the app, launching it from its shortcut, whatever you want to do. Choose the game you want to play and it should launch right up. Now remember, if you do want to play multiplayer, that's how you have to launch the game. If you just launch it through Steam, you're not going to have any access to the multiplayer mod. This screen's always a good sign that you have the multiplayer working. So this is going to be where you want to put in your email, your password, just the same that you'd use for Truckers MP. This is your Truckers MP account you're logging into, not your Steam account, your Truckers MP details. So that's your Truckers MP email and your Truckers MP password. You'll be down to your server selection. There's different servers available depending on some different events they have running. Right now, we just have the basic server list. Simulation 1, where we usually play on Sundays for the SPLH convoys. Come and join us, by the way. The other simulations, Sim 2 for when Sim 1 is full. US, Arcade, where there is no collision. Pro Mods, which I would highly recommend. I'll be doing a video on multiplayer Pro Mods in the near future. Keep an eye out for that. And Pro Mods Arcade. Join the server that you would like. It is worth noting, if a server is completely full with a queue over 200 people, you won't be able to connect. There's a refresh button on that server screen that I've just passed. Wait until the queue is less than 200 people. Hit connect and you should get put into the queue. And there you are, all logged in. So while I have you guys here, I'll just go ahead and explain a few other things. I'm going to assume that you guys have some basic knowledge on single player game 
So I'll just cover the extra multiplayer functions. The two biggest functions you're gonna have in multiplayer that are not available in single player is your tab key, which brings up your nearby players list, as well as various other options, and your Y key, which brings up your in-game chat, which you can also use for various commands. There's a ton of functionality in both of these menus, and I will not cover everything, but I'll do my best to cover most things. So in the tab menu, once you've pressed tab, if you right click on your mouse, you will get your cursor. This lets you do all kinds of things, from clicking on players to be able to mute them and report them, to cool little functions like changing the channel on your CB radio. In addition to the in-game chat, there's an in-game CB radio. 19 is the default public channel, but if you click this big knob right here, you can change it. Total of 20 CB channels. The far little button right here toggles the CB on and off. So you can just turn it off entirely. The default button to speak on the CB is X on your keyboard. So just... See, you heard that. That was another player toggling their push to talk. It makes a neat little CB sound. And people will hear you out of your system microphone. So as long as you've got a Windows microphone set up, the game will automatically detect that. So if you press tab, right click, get your mouse, and click the golden settings cog. So in here, there's all kinds of different options available. Some are fairly complex, and I don't really touch them a whole lot. Others, like the name tag, are very handy, and I definitely recommend setting that up. So this will display your name tag. You can see some other players with their name tags. It's very common to make this your VTC tag in color, but you could pretty much make it whatever you want so long as it doesn't break any Trekkers MP rules. A bunch of different settings in here if you have performance issues, not loading cabin accessories, not loading flags, that can actually help quite a bit. This sound menu actually has some very convenient options for setting up your CB. So from here, you can select your different Windows devices so that you can test that your microphone is working. And as we can see here, when I talk, the bar moves, so I know that this is working in-game. You can adjust your volumes and all that kind of stuff. Toggle reversing sounds, that's a nice one to turn off sometimes in busier areas. Again, just more graphical settings, personal preference, and performance options all in there. It is worth knowing as a new player that if you encounter a troll or a bully or just a mean player, a rule breaker in general, and you want to report them, there's a way to do it in game. Now on the busier servers, a lot of in game reports go unseen. So I really would recommend that you guys do kind of like what I'm doing now and record your gameplay footage. Even if you're not gonna use it for anything other than reporting, it can be really handy to have. It's simple, easy, free to do. Just use something like OBS, Nvidia's Shadow Play, and just record when you're driving on multiplayer. That way, you can submit a web report on that player, which is guaranteed to be evaluated by an administrator on Trucker's MP. Anyways, for the in-game report system, it's easy. You can just select a player. For this example, I will select myself and report. Up here, there's all kinds of different options. So just select the option that suits the offense best. In this case, I believe I was trolling and griefing. I would then send the report. Now, I'm not going to do that. You should not ever send in a false report. And when you do send in that report, it will automatically log the last couple of minutes or so of gameplay. So when an admin looks at that report, they can see exactly what happens. An admin will know if you're lying. Don't troll with the reports. Use them well. If you're gonna do a video report, you are gonna need the person's ID. People on Truckers MP have a few different IDs, their display name, server ID, which is dynamic and changes. And then you've got your Steam 64 ID, which is directly bound to your Steam profile, followed by your Truckers MP ID. This is the one that you want, the Truckers MP ID. And for whatever reason you don't like doing it like that, there is another way. Press Y for chat, forward slash, P, info, space, and then put in the player's server ID. So that's their first number to the left there in the tab menu. So we'll use this player as our example this time. So that way, since I've done the P info, you can see the name matches up, the ID matches up, and it puts right here, nice and convenient for me, their trucker's MP ID. So just make sure you save that somewhere. 
so that when you do your report, they're going to ask you for this and you can send it in. That's the way that the Truckers MP admins will be able to identify the player. So again, this is just for recorded footage if you're going to do a web-based report. While we're in the chat menu, one more notable command that you have access to is a fix command, slash fix. Now, that is a great command and can help you out of a serious bind. As you can see, my truck actually has 46% damage right now, but I can't repair it because I do not have a trailer. If I were to have a trailer, I could fix myself completely, which is super nice. So as long as your truck is on its wheels, you can fix it. There is a cooldown on that command, but very nice to recover if you get hit by some troll or just make an accident on your own. As we saw there, I just about got kicked for AFK since I've been sitting here talking for too long. The server will kick you automatically 10 minutes if you don't move. You can cancel that by moving or just by typing into the chat. If you type into the chat, it'll reset your 10 minute timer. We'll start again though immediately. And so every 10 minutes, you either need to be moving or you need to be typing in the chat. If you look up here, you can see that I'm in a non-collisions area. So that means since I'm in a service station, no other player can collide with me. I can still collide into walls and such. So watch out for the map obstacles. This will disappear as soon as I leave a non-collisions area and there'll be nothing up there. You can check that you're in multiplayer just by pressing tab. If you press tab and that tab window comes up, then you know you're connected. Or you can press Y and if that comes up and you can type, you know you're in the server. If for whatever reason you get disconnected, you get AFK kicked, kicked for headlights, etc, etc, there'll be a big red offline right in there so you'll know you're offline when you first connect to the server if you're waiting in the queue it'll say up here in queue so basically up here is your server status connection status so always always look up there if you're ever a little bit confused as to whether you're connected waiting in queue disconnected or what have you also as i just mentioned there you can get kicked for not having your headlights on when they're meant to be so if i was to start moving at this time i would need to have my headlights on which i think they are if they're not, you'll see a message up in your chat here, just like the kick message. It'll be red and it'll say you have to turn your headlights on in 15 seconds or get kicked. Don't worry too much if it happens. If you get kicked for AFK or headlights, don't worry about it. it does not affect your account. Nobody knows. It's just an automated system to keep people from needlessly AFKing in the servers and driving at night without headlights. That basically covers anything and everything. There's a few extra bits I'll cover in some future videos, but I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope that was informative and answered all your questions. If you do have any more at all, feel free to leave them down below in the comments. If you did enjoy this instructional tutorial, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next one.